guys welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is Dominique aka Legally Bomb and if you're not new um, thank you for coming back as you can tell by the title today we're gonna be doing another dating video or a little Q&A millennial dating video if I'm talking funny I'm sorry I haven't been wearing my Invisalign I just put it back in a oh, part two I did my original dating as a millennial video about a year ago it was not exactly a year it's been very close to a year and so I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me more questions about dating and you guys asked me questions and yeah you guys liked the first one so I thought I would do it again because for some reason I really think y'all just be wanting to know my business which is cool so the first question says do we blame these mothers for all these f boys um I feel like you cannot put that on all the moms because it's just like the way we were taught not to do things we still did them anyway or we still do them anyway so it's not 100% on the mothers but do I think that there are some mothers out here who enable their sons absolutely now the part of them not being worth two pennies we can't blame that on the moms some of it could be on the moms but it could also be on their daddies we don't know we don't know their history but I'm very fair, so I don't want to put all the blame on one party. So it could be the mama and the daddy. It could be the lack of mom. It could be the lack of dad. We don't know, but do parents play a role in how their kids come out? Absolutely. But they're not 100% to blame. Because at some point in time, you got to be responsible for self. The next one says, why do you think commitment is hard for our generation specifically? I think right now our generation is just in a time where we're just like moving and shaking. I know for me personally, it's hard for me because commitment requires responsibility and be responsible for somebody else. And I don't always know if that's something that I want to do, especially as we try to like, we're near our 30s, which means we're all trying to settle down and figure things out so me committing myself to another person is not always the top priority for me but I also feel like once that person comes along it won't really be a problem to commit yourself like they'll make things easier than harder like I feel as though I'll know the person I'm supposed to be with, the person I'm supposed to be dating is the right person because I don't mind being by myself, I don't mind being single, I don't mind spending time with myself. So in order for me to date you and want to be with you, you have to feel better than me being by myself. And that's very hard because I have no problem being by myself. I'm an only child. So I just think that's just, commitment is just not a top priority. But when that person comes around and you really just don't want to be without them, then you'll be wanting to commit then. And someone said, in this point in life, what are your absolute non-negotiables? Um, non-negotiables. I haven't really, I've never thought about this. Um, because I'm just not really a person that's just like, oh, you can't do this and I won't date you. Now, I will say this. I'll be playing when I say it, but I'll be dead serious. I don't mess with daddies. It's not that it's a non-negotiable, but right now it's really not, no. Right now it's a non-negotiable because, no, I don't mess with nobody's daddy. You got a kid, I'm good on you. Another non-negotiable. Now that I've seen the other side of this, um, you cannot be broke. Um, not saying you got to be the wealthiest, but you got to have something going on. You got to have some type of coin in your pocket. And I'm not about to be, I'm not the type to be asking and, you know, expecting you to pay my bills and stuff like that, but like I said, I've seen the other side of things and you got to come with a coin. So, my non-negotiables are children, being broke. What else? I'm going to say, this kind of sounds shallow a little bit, but... <laughs> I don't play about teeth. <laughs> and this is coming from somebody who is trying to get their teeth in order. And if you're not trying to get your teeth in order, if they're not already in order, by this time we should all have insurance. So another thing that is really not negotiable for me is teeth, um, a nice smile. That's very shallow of me and I'm very sorry. Well, no, I'm not sorry because <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm not messing with nobody's nasty mouth or yeah, sorry, not sorry. So broke children, 
mm, a bad smile or bad teeth. Sorry. I keep saying sorry, but I'm really not sorry about that because I don't play about teeth. The next one says, if you want to be in a relationship, how long are you willing to date before you guys make it official? Okay, so I think I may, I should have watched my other video before I, I did this one, but it's whatever. So I personally am not like really hell bent on a title. And I'm also not really hell bent on timelines. I feel like making things official and dating is really not making things special, but dating is really a subject, subjective thing because there are some people who date for two years and then make it official. There are some people who date for a month and make it official and both of those relationships can work out just fine. So I can't say, I don't know, for me, I don't know because I really be chilling. Like right now, I really be chilling. I don't really be trying to apply no pressure to nobody. So for me personally, I can't really say I would say maybe like after six, seven months, we can start talking about like, okay, what's the next step? I guess, I don't know, cause I really be chilling. So, I don't know. What do y'all, like what's y'all's, um, what's y'all's timeline of stuff? I don't know. Cause also with that, it's just like, as long as you have this understand, I'm really more so of an understanding communication rather than a title type thing. And I don't mean a bond, like a bond, okay, whatever. But I mean like we've had the conversation of, you know, um, we're the only one that each other is talking to, dealing with, as opposed to saying like, you know, you're my boyfriend, you're my girlfriend. I just don't mind the communication as opposed to the title. Like, some a guy never said like you're my girlfriend, you're my boyfriend, and we was just like, but we already had the conversation of like we know what's up. I really don't care. So, and who knows when that could happen? But I would just say maybe like six to seven months or whatever you feel like you're ready to be official, and then that you don't want to waste your time anymore. So, whatever works for you, I don't know. This is a good one. Somebody said things you've learned about yourself through dating. I'm going to save that one to the last so I can just give my little one year update. My little spill of me dating in the past year. Somebody said talk about smashing on the first night. Again, that's something that's subjective. I don't have judgment for anybody who decides to do that on the first night or somebody who decides to wait two years. I just feel like it's really all about what you feel like. I feel like at this age we kind of all have a spirit of discernment and we know what's right and we know what's wrong we know what feels good to us and what doesn't and even though sometimes we still try to ignore um what's the word i don't want to say signs but i guess you say like we try to ignore signs of what does feel good i mean what doesn't feel good and what doesn't look good and try to make it feel good yeah what was i saying oh we talking about have sex on the first night. Yeah, I, I think that's up to you. Like, do what, what do you feel is the correct thing? Not my, not, not for me per se, but if it's for you, do you. That's what you do. But that's not really my thing, but nobody's right or wrong here. Like I said, we all have a spirit of discernment by this age. And if it feels like that's what you're supposed to do, then we do what you got to do. And this person said, how important is financial security in dating? Before, it wasn't really something that I thought about, like I mentioned before, but now that I've seen, I've encountered guys who are my, are more financially secure, kind of inched its way up. Like I said, being broke is like a non-negotiable now. So it's kind of inched its way up on my level of importance. I think because before I was really dating not dating, but I was thinking about dating in college and we don't really have, we didn't really have that much money in college. So now we're all like adults and in the working field. Well, I hope you dating adults, but that's another sort of one of the day. But the guys that I like or that I would like to date are working now. So it is really no reason why you shouldn't have your finances in order, but I'm not here to like there's like, 
I don't know, because I'm understanding of like people trying to get them get their lives in order. But I also feel like like a guy told me he was like, if you don't, if you can't financially take care of a woman or do what needs to be done to court a woman, you shouldn't be dating. So that's how that's how important it is to me. Like if you're dating me, that means like you got me. If I need you to have me, it's not like we gonna have on everything. Like no, I'm not doing that no more. I'm not saying we gonna like I'm gonna run it up on your tab because that's not what I do. But no, we're not going Dutch on everything no more. So it is. It's it's important, but it's not like the most important thing. I really more so care about how you treat me, how you act, um, more than I do. Like financial security is on my list of things that I look at, but it's not the highest priority. Does that make sense? And then the last one, what do you consider unconditional love? I don't know. I don't know. I I have nothing. I don't know. Cause I just feel like I don't know, is it possible to experience love without conditions? And I say that because I feel like we all have these things that we require and that we need when it comes to love and relationships. And when those things aren't being fulfilled, why would you be there? So is that not a condition? Uncondition to me, in my mind, unconditional love would mean like staying around when you're not being fulfilled or accepting things um, that you normally wouldn't. I don't know, but I don't know. I've never experienced it. I can't say I've encountered somebody that makes me want to love them unconditionally. Um, it's also like when I think of unconditional, it's like somebody can do whatever to you and you still love them. Granted, I am very a very forgiving person and um, it's not really much that I like hold on to, but I also don't like rock with you in the same way once that forget what's that trust and we have such an issue so i don't i don't i don't know if that's even a possible thing a thing of a possibility mm -hmm. i don't know okay now this is the last question the one that i can say we'll come back to things you learned about yourself through dating that's what i've learned that i'm a very forgiving person right after <laughs> right after i filmed that last video the girl got her heart broke and so that led me to live my life in a different way all last year <laughs> last year was a real wild year i was doing whatever i wanted to do because my feelings was hurt and i didn't know how to like handle that so i've learned but it also that's just what it also taught me forgiveness but it also taught me heartbreak and how to deal with it like I saw what I did last year and dealing with heartbreak that I don't want to do now also through this last year of me like dating I was like all last year I was just like nope I don't want to take anybody seriously I just want to be free because I think I said it in my last video that was the first year I had been single since I was in like fully single since college so I just wanted to be free and do what I wanted to do and encounter whoever I wanted to encounter not like that not like that so I allowed myself to do just that in doing that I also learned about myself that I'm not built for that I'm not built to be this free person I'm not built to be in situations where I can't express myself because this person is just a fling or something like that. Like I need more structure. Um, is commitment the right word? Maybe like a different level, a higher level of commitment than what I dealt with last year. Um, I don't like being in situations where I can't express myself. Like you see something you don't like, but you can't really speak on it because that's not really your due. So I don't, I don't like that because I, I don't like having to suppress my emotions because I like to say how I feel one thing about me I'm very good at communicating I'm very good at telling you how you make me happy and I'm very good at telling you how you don't make me happy 
I don't like being in situations where I can't do that. Cause it's just, like last year, it wasn't my place to do that. What else have I learned about myself? Oh, one day me and my best friend, we were talking and I had something to do with a guy and he was just like pissing me off. And I was like, I just really, I learned that I really just have to say it. Like when I'm upset with somebody or something as it pertains to dating, I have to just say it and then I won't be mad anymore. It's like, yeah, I just have to get it off my chest and I'm not mad about it anymore. She was like, what's wrong with you? Like, why can't you ever stay mad? I was like, I don't know. Like. I think it's because I know what I bring to the table and I know what type of person I am. And so once I communicate with you how I feel, it's up to you to decide whether you want to change that or, you know, if that's something you want to work on, if that's something you want to disregard, it's up to you. But all I can do is communicate for me. And so once I've communicated with you, and especially if I have to keep communicating the same thing to you, you can't look at me and be confused or be upset when I stop messing with you because I made it very clear what the issue was so that's why I don't really stay mad because I don't have a because I know I gave 100% I know how what's the word how I don't want to say how real how genuine I am and I know that I know a lot of people say this and it's fine if you believe that for yourself but I really believe for myself like you're not gonna find another me like you might not feel me when I'm there, but you're going to feel me when I'm gone. So, it's up to you whether or not you want to keep me around or whether or not you don't want me around. Because I make it very, like, black and white as to what I require. It's not really rocket science. And I also don't really require a lot. Like, I don't really ask for much. So, the fact that you can't do that says a lot. Um, what else have I learned? I've learned patience because... Like I said before, I don't mind being by myself. So when you're dating somebody, you have to realize they've been doing what, say the person you're dating is 28 and you're, you're 26. For 26 years, you've been doing what you want to do. For 28 years, they've been doing what they want to do. And here y'all are trying to get to know each other and kind of trying to make your paths align after this 26 and 28 years of doing what y'all do on your own so off rip you just like oh no like you see one thing you know like, I'm like oh no I'm like I'm good especially when I don't really like you like that I'm definitely like oh no like we're good because again I don't mind being by myself so you can go but I had to stop doing that because I have to be patient because again we're trying to make our paths align and that takes time so I had to become a lot more patient and understanding I guess y'all want to know, just like in the last video, what's my relationship status? Um, I don't really feel like as nervous as I did last time I said it, but still single. Still single. Which is cool. But I feel like I'm kind of moving towards the energy of being over, being single. And not that I feel like I need a man. Because I don't. But do I want one? I do. I do. And so yeah, I got a little crush or whatever. And I feel like that's enough information. Listen, it's 2020. Everybody got somebody, okay? You dealing with somebody and they tell you they don't got nobody, they're lying. They might be trying to protect your feelings, but don't believe them. I, I just feel like everybody got somebody. And if they don't. No, especially, it's very rare that people are laying alone. And it's even rare, even more rare for somebody to just not be entertaining anybody. You got to be texting somebody. You got to be FaceTiming somebody. Especially a man. A man can't be by himself. So I think all men got somebody. So even when they say they don't, I have got friends that they don't got nobody. I feel like you're lying to me. Because again, everybody got somebody. So yeah, I got a little crush or whatever, but we'll see how that goes. I mean, even if it did go somewhere, I really wouldn't. I wouldn't say anything about it. I wouldn't post that. I wouldn't. I can talk about being single, but I can't talk about being in a relationship. Because that ain't nobody gets me. So yeah, I just be chilling. But like I said, I think I am. 
I think. I don't know. I be going back and forth. I'm going to tell you why I be going back and forth. When you get into a relationship, it requires you. Did I talk about this earlier? I think I did. When you get into a relationship, it requires you to be responsible for somebody else's feelings and be more considerate. And I don't feel like doing that every day. When you're dating, you don't have to do that every day. You can do it some days. But once you make that commitment to somebody that y'all are going to be together, that's it. You are now, you know, you have to be more mindful about the decisions you make because there's somebody else involved. And I don't know if I want to do that every day. But I, I feel like I'm slowly but surely becoming ready to have a desire to want to be responsible and committed to somebody. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know. But yeah. I'm getting older. I'm about to be 28 next year. I mean, not next year, this year. And I would like to be somebody's mom one day, somebody's wife one day. So with that, you know, these relationships don't get established, you know, in two weeks. Well, some do, not for me. So I had to become more open. My cousin, I had a conversation with my guy cousin. He told me, he was like, you know, you have to become more open to dating. And he was correct. So these relationships don't happen overnight in my world. So if I want, you know, kids and stuff like that, and my husband, I got the gut. I got to be more patient, be more understanding, and yeah, so still single, mingling, not really mingling, not really. I, I can't be balance most people all the time, that's just not me. One more thing before we go, I just want to tell y'all this. If you have been hurt in the past, don't hold on to that. Like, allow yourself to still feel, don't allow your past be it your past from your daddy, your mama, your ex-boyfriend, your ex-girlfriend. Don't let anybody hinder what God is trying to bless you with. I feel like it's very important for us to live life without holding back our feelings. Like, if you want to fall for somebody, just go ahead and do it. We don't know how it's going to end, but be open to it. And take it for the lesson. If it does end, it's okay. Just take that as a lesson. And also, don't be thinking that every guy you mean ladies is your husband because that's not it sometimes he was put there to teach you what you want in a husband just be a little bit more open. i think we can all be a little bit more open when it comes to dating don't be as reserved you know open up it's okay you might you might, you bet you're scared of getting hurt you probably will get hurt because they're gonna do something that upsets you you know what i'm saying now you know there's different levels of hurt but again, we're probably gonna experience some of it. So don't don't hold yourself back because you're scared. Just do it. Fall for the man. And if he turns out to not be worth two cents, it's okay. God gonna send somebody that's worth four. One day you'll get to a hundred. I don't know. But just don't let it hold you back. That's my advice to everybody. Don't let the past or your hurt hold you back. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as you enjoyed the first one. If you are not already, please, please, please be sure to subscribe. I'm pretty close to a 1,000 subscribers, so if you could, please subscribe and share my videos. I know I'm not the most consistent, but with life. Life's life. But I appreciate you guys who support me um, when I do decide to upload. That's it for this video, you guys. I'll see y'all in the next one.